Vicky was one of those people who stepped up during the pandemic, live streaming the morning parish mass almost every day for a year. She ensured that the church could still stay connected with its congregation, even if the physical doors could not be open. Many in the Shire will know Vicky well, and they can speak of her devotion to St. Aloysius and to St. Vinnie's and the enduring friendship and connections she made. My prayers will be with her family. I could have written these words, but I didn't. These were written by our Prime Minister, Scott Morrison. He said this about Vicky Rowland. For me, Vicky was a friend I've known for a long time. She encouraged me as a young deacon. She encouraged me in my faith. She encouraged me in my passion. And for many of us, I think she's done many similar things as well. She had this way of just going out of her way a little bit, working out what's, what someone really likes, what they're passionate about, and encouraging them. And helping to bring out that greatness in each and every one of us. Vicky was, I think, the unassuming hero. Over the years, people often had comments to make about Vicky, and these sometimes hurt Vicky. But she didn't retaliate. She didn't sort of say, well, I can make comments back to you. Vicky would just hear it, and sometimes that hurt Vicky. And I know perhaps some of us have probably um, experienced some of Vicky's hurt at times. But I think Vicky gets the last word. It's not often you get a prime minister who sends a message for the funeral of a person. The tributes that have come through in the last week from right across the world have been quite amazing. This time last year, just as the church was opening again, Vicky had already been live streaming for um, a number of, of weeks. And the requirements at the time was that if we were going to open the church, we needed someone to be attending at the church all the time. We couldn't just have the church open. Um, this was back in June last year. Between myself and Vicky, Vicky took on probably four or five hours a day. She would sit at the door of the church and she would welcome people. She'd spend that time just so that people could come into this place to pray. She opened the church every morning um, for the last 12 months. And then before COVID, she was doing so many things as well. She'd set up for mass every day. She'd read, she'd sing. Many of the people doing things today have done those things with Vicky, have known Vicky, Vicky personally. Our acolytes, our singers, our musicians, our readers. We've all been touched in, in some incredible way by Vicky. She understood the challenges of others. She had great empathy. She had what she referred to me, and I've, I know other people have, have heard it as well. She had the vault. You could talk to Vicky about something and it would go into the vault. Um, I'm sure some of you know what I'm talking about. She loved little cards. She loved her books. She loves notes. She loved chocolates. And she loved sharing these with others. And she had this way, and many of you probably experienced this. She, even though she had no children of her own, she did everything she could to make children and families feel welcome, especially in this place. Even new families. Some of them are here today. She'd see a new family that came to, came to the Mass and she'd come over to me and say, who are they? What are their names? And she'd go over and then she'd introduce themselves. And she would make them feel that they're part of our family here at St. Aloysius. Vicky loved reading. She didn't just love reading novels. She, just, she didn't just lo love reading history or the newspaper or magazines. But she also loved reading the scriptures and the lives of the saints, the writings of the saints. A number of saints she was particularly inspired by. Saint Augustine, Saint Therese of Lisieux, Saint um, Teresa of Calcutta or Mother Teresa, Saint Oscar Romero. 
St. Augustine said that our heart is restless until it rests in you. To a certain extent, Vicky was restless, but I was able to see over the last few months, Vicky was very much at peace. Even the day she died, she was at peace that day. There was a joy in her, a delight in her. Over the last week, um, I'm sure many of us have, have felt this way as well. I've been thinking through um, my experiences of Vicky, thinking through um, what happened at the end with Vicky as well. Some of us, I'm sure, I, I know I've, I've experienced this and probably some of you have as well, that I haven't slept as, as well as I have in the past. Um, Vicky's been sort of going through my thoughts. Someone who was a great friend, um, but also a brother, a sister. We're a relationship as brothers and sisters in Christ. Vicky lived a whole life of service. And this is what we're called to do. She lived the life of Jesus Christ. I think about the death of Jesus. And Jesus was taken out from the centre of Jerusalem and he died just on the outskirts just outside the walls of Jerusalem in a very public place. We know, the, we know of the death of Jesus. We have it here on the crucifix. Vicky went from this place, from this place of peace. She went to the coffee shop, her second home, you could say. And then from there she went out and died in a very public way, out on the streets just near the train station. There was something quite humbling in that. But also, to me, I think back to the death of Jesus, that he was taken out from the centre of the city and he died where all could see him. And I think Vicky's death unites her death with the death of Jesus. But we as Christians know that death is not the end of the story for Jesus and is not the end of the story for Vicky either. There is resurrection. We know after three days Jesus rose from the dead and then ascended into glory, into heaven. And that's the hope of the Christian as well. For those who've lived the way of love, there is a place of eternity. And that's what Jesus has promised to us. And that our hearts are yearning for this place of peace. Vicky's heart was yearning for this place of peace right throughout her life. In many respects, you, I think you could say that Vicky was a form of a modern-day religious. She'd dedicate every day to prayer. She'd get up first thing in the morning, she'd come, she would pray. And she's done that for many, many years. When Mass was at 7 a.m. here, she was one of the first people into the church. She started to help set up for Mass at 7 a.m. And then in the midst of the pandemic, we sort of had to work out, well... We can't keep 7 and 9.15 going. We only had one priest, so we moved to 8 o'clock and then Vicky um, was very supportive of, of, of Mass happening at 8 o'clock. She prayed every day and then she lived a life of charity. She was passionate about the St Vincent de Paul Society. Just, just over two weeks ago, she stood where I'm standing right now and she talked about the magnificent work of the St Vincent de Paul Society within our area and encouraged our community to raise money for the Vinnie's Winter Appeal. She was telling me after the, the first weekend, she said, we did okay. I said, how did you go? Oh, it's about $8,000. I said, oh, it's not too bad. We've still got a few more weeks. Vicky's asked, her family has asked to please contribute, if you can, to the Vinnie's Winter Appeal. If not for all of the great, magnificent work of the people who are assisted, if just for Vicky. Because Vicky, literally where I was standing, was, was asking for this just two weeks ago. She lived a life of prayer, a life of charity, a life of formation. She loved teaching. She loved scripture. She loved programs for children, but she loved programs for adults. She wrote programs herself so that others could come to a deeper knowledge of Jesus Christ, so that they could understand and love and then put that into more practical action in the world. And she was one of welcome. Vicky was St Aloysius. 
This parish is dedicated to St Aloysius and St Aloysius' feast day is the 21st of June. The day after is the feast day of St John Fisher. It's also the day that Vicky died. Father Bill Milstead, um, who has been helping us over the last few months, got to know Vicky very well. He said to me that Vicky joins the, the celebrities of the last 10 days of June in the life of the church. You get St. John, you get St. Aloysius, and then you get St. John Fisher and St. Thomas More and St. John the Baptist and Peter and St. Paul, St. Irenaeus and others. And Vicky joins the legends of this area of faith. Today, we grieve. We try to make sense of what's happened, someone who's died so young. But let all of us commit to a deeper faith, to a deeper belief, because this was what Vicky had. Funeral after funeral, Vicky would come and volunteer her time to live stream funerals over the last 12 months for people so they could participate in this act of worship. She'd come here day after day. More than a thousand masses videos have been up uploaded because of the work of Vicky over the last 12 months. It's quite incredible. I think Vicky perhaps maybe even had a little laugh this morning. The 8am we started the mass and the lapel microphone that I have wasn't working. It looked like it was working for me but it wasn't working and over the last thousand videos, live streams that we've done, there's probably been about 10 or 15 that we've had a little glitch here or there. Here we are on the day of her funeral and there's a glitch. I'm sure she would have found that amusing. I know she got stressed every time this happened. She wanted it to be the best for everyone. And, wanted, and, so, and with technology, you, something's going to, something, when you do it every single day, multiple times a day, there is the possibility something's going to break down, whether it's the internet, the audio, the video, the lights, the, you name it. There's lots of moving parts. And she was so passionate about making the best. So I think perhaps she got the last laugh that at a funeral mass at 8 o'clock this morning, there was a glitch for the first five or six minutes of the mass. Vicky was a a person of faith. Vicky was a person of love. She was a person of family, as we heard from Val. She was a person of our community. She was a person of Cronulla. Our own Prime Minister has prayed for her. Let's now pray for her as we enter into the liturgy of the Eucharist to pray for Vicky's eternal rest, that she will be taken with the saints and the angels into eternal glory. I'll leave you with one of Vicky's favourite scripture quotes. She wrote a little prayer book which she gave me a number of years ago with scripture quotes and, and quotes from the different saints. Whenever trouble comes your way, let it be an opportunity for joy. For when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow.